Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the baseball slate for this evening. I'm not going to be looking at the early slate. I'm just going to be doing the, the main slate until Bobby gets back. And again, these are going to be usually a little bit shorter than when I'm doing them with Bobby. Um, they're also early looks. Uh, I'm going to try to make it for live at 5.30 tonight because it's a 6.30 slate, but it really just does depend. I might be busy this evening, in which case I will not be able to go live. I apologize for that. I uh, just have to I'll update projections probably, but I don't know if I'm going to be going live today. I will let you guys know. So I'm probably going to be a little bit different than the field on the pitching. Um, I, I kind of have two standouts here, and it might not be who everybody else is playing. I don't know. I, I Look, I, I see instinctively that, would you supposed to be a great play, right? I mean, Cincinnati hasn't gotten the hit since the Eisenhower administration when Woodruff is really cruising right now, but I'm just not kind of seeing that. And, and um, with my numbers, I don't have him as the top option. I mean, for me, it's, it's, I mean, I have, I have Carlos Rodon is significantly better. I mean, I don't, I don't know why it is maybe because Colorado is that much weaker of, a, of an opponent than Cincinnati, but that can't be. Um, maybe the ballpark is just better in San Francisco than in Cincinnati. Um, that could be maybe just because Rodon is a better striker or whatever. All that is just kind of already factored into the projections. And currently I just have Rodon as kind of a standout. Um, well, I shouldn't, well, I shouldn't say standout. There, there are other things you could play, but I do have Rodon is, is to me a significantly better player than Woodrow. Um, I also have Rodon, by the way, at about, 50% ownership. So nothing that I'm saying is particularly earth shattering as I like to throw around. Um, but I do think Rodon is clearly the best option. Um, so what I'm getting as my second favorite pitcher today is actually Julio Urias. Uh, and it's kind of a weird, a weird guy to take a stand on only because I mean, doesn't, you don't think of him as having those big strikeout games, you know, and you also don't think of him like really going deep, but I'm just kind of looking at the trend here and, you know, he started off two innings, then five, and then two innings of six, of six each. Um, so I you know maybe I could let him go a seventh inning or something like that, but I mean, his pitch counts has been relatively low. Um, so, I mean, they could afford to pitch him more, but, I mean, I don't know. And Pittsburgh is pretty hopeless. Maybe he could just get cruising and they just let him pitch a little more. And maybe he does get some more strikeouts. So I just feel as though he's really safe. I mean, he's, look, he's safe for a win. There are 250 favorites. So that's four points. I mean, it's not always four points. It's probably averaged about three points, right? Um, actually, what would it be? So 60, like 65% of the time he gets four and 35% of the time he doesn't get four. So um so maybe that average is about 2.2 points, whatever that counts. So I have him rated a little bit high, but that's, that's, that's just where I'm at. The, the next place I would go before getting to Woodruff is a really, really weird one. And that would be um, Michael Pineda. And that, that's, that's kind of scary when you think about it. I mean, Michael Pineda is very prone to, you know, throwing some meatballs out there, but Oakland's pretty bad. Um, so at 6,200, I, I, I just have him rated as a good point for dollar play. Um, the, um, the other one that I'm getting is somebody that Bobby was kind of into I mean, a couple of starts ago. I don't know how we ended up doing, but I think Syndergaard is actually a pretty good pivot. Um, I do like him at 7,900 for the angels. And then, uh, can I get down to these other guys? Yeah, I think Mackenzie Gore. I mean, look, Woodruff is, is, is a solid play, but I don't think relative to his ownership, he's going to be that great. You got Mackenzie Gore, who, you know, he's got blazing strikeout upside. I mean, he's certainly fine. Flexin, 5,300. I would prefer to probably play Pineda if I'm going to do that. And same thing with Gamba. I think I'd just rather play Pineda rather than pay down for Gamba. One guy I'm not getting, which is a little concerning to me, is Michael Kopech. Um, I mean, he's got he's got good stuff. He's he's got numbers. I don't know why he's not really rating so well. Maybe he's had a couple of bad games. 
Yeah, I mean, his last game, he only pitched four innings. The in the game before that, he only scored nine fantasy points. But but what I will say is this about that Chicago game, the May 3rd game. If I'm not mistaken, the wind was blowing in pretty heavily there. And you might think, well, well wait a minute. <laughs> if, if that's the case, like, why, why didn't he do better? Um Remember, when the wind is really, really blowing in, you got a young pitcher, and that, that can really affect him sometimes, um, even if it's in his favor. So maybe he just that just wasn't for him. But it's not as if he had a bad game. He pitched – they only let him pitch because he – well, I see he hit 83 pitches in four innings. I guess they didn't want him to go more than 80. I'm not even sure what, what that was all about. But I don't know. If they give this guy a break and let him pitch, I mean, he can certainly do it, but – I don't know. Yeah, you know what? Now I actually do feel comfortable not having it. I mean, he just hasn't been given the opportunity. The one time he let him pitch ninety-five pitches, he got, you know, he had a bad game. I guess four, four, four walks. You know, so I guess he's not going to make it. So for me, I mean, just kind of to review um, on the pitching side of things, Rodon kind of looks like a standout, and then Urias is a pretty safe SP two. I mean, Woodruff looks okay, but at high ownership, I'm probably gonna, I'm probably gonna fade it. Um, I'm probably more inclined maybe to take Syndergaard over him, you know. So maybe Syndergaard, Rodon, then Arias and Mackenzie Gore. You could try that. That's not a bad idea. And then Pineda as your punt, like if you need it. And we're gonna get to whether we need it in a second. But I think if Woodruff is really chalky, I'm probably not going to play that, uh, at least my hand builds. I'm sure he's going to show up in some of the some of the sims because he just does have a big ceiling sometimes. But I, I see 20% ownership. I think it's going to be higher than that. That's my opinion. Um, all right, let's take a look at the at the uh, the hitting here. So the big, uh, over, not overwhelming, but I guess the, the big team to look for is the Dodgers. Uh, from on a raw points perspective or a raw runs perspective, raw fantasy points perspective, Dodgers do rate to be the strongest play um, going into Pittsburgh against Quintana. And you could play the usual suspects. We could play, obviously, all those righties, but you could play the lefties too for the Dodgers. I mean, if it saves you a little bit of ownership, play some Bellinger, play some uh, Freddie Freeman or whatever. Um, so I wouldn't just play the righties, but the righties with Turner, Turner, Betts, Taylor. I mean, they certainly make a lot of sense and get you, get you off to a good start at six 30 in the afternoon to just get these Dodgers in the top of the first to score five runs. That would be nice. Um, but yeah, these are going to be really, really highly owned. So it, it, it is important to kind of look at some pivots here. And I do have, I mean, there's a lot of teams that are kind of, you know, jammed up here as far as pivots go. So let me go over some of them. Um, the White Sox, I think they look pretty good as a pivot uh, against Plesak. I think Milwaukee against um, against Luis Castillo just coming back. I think that could be a good pivot. I think Miami uh, could be a good pivot. Uh, and then... I guess my next one would be Philly. Where's Philly? Now, going against Flexen is never, never great. I mean, he could usually keep – he keeps the ball in the ballpark. You know, so maybe maybe going against Flex is not the greatest idea, but they would be my next one. Um, let me see if I look at them by value. See, they, they want me to play Arizona um, tonight. I mean, if you just wanted to go by points per dollar. Um, but I don't know. Uh, I think they're going to get some ownership. And I'll probably try to go elsewhere. The My I, I would much prefer to do the Miami um, than to go to, to Arizona as far as value goes. So that's what I'm probably going to do. Maybe maybe something like double pay for pitching and then play Miami. Um, may, you know, alongside the Dodgers, obviously. But Think about it. If you're going to play the Dodgers at high ownership, I mean, can you really play Rodon and 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 um, Woodruff? 
you know, even if you could make this work, I mean, it's just way too chalky. But what you could do if you played these two together, if you like Woodruff, is you could then just stack Miami because you could certainly make that work. And I don't think Miami's going to be particularly high over. Um, what other teams can I look at here aside from the teams I mentioned? I mentioned the White Sox. I mentioned Milwaukee, Miami, maybe some Philadelphia. I don't know if I can get all the way down to like San Francisco or even Tampa. I don't want to do that. The Arizona ones I'm have to struggle with, whether I want to play that, because I do think it's going to be somewhat chalky because, look, they have a lot of lefties, and um, Hernandez is not particularly good against lefties, so I think people are going to play Arizona as a result of that. Um, they just don't rate – I mean, they rate fine on a raw basis and on a value basis. I mean, they do rate to be the top overall value stack, but Arizona at high ownership might not be where I want to go. And if I play Arizona – I probably don't want to play Rodon and Woodruff. I probably want to do something like Rodon and, and, and Gore or something like that. That makes a little more sense, you know? Um, but really the safest way to play, I mean, not the safest, but, but like the numbers based way to play is to play Pineda with Rodon. And then you could just jam in all these Dodgers. I mean, that seems to be a cashy type of build, right? But that's where I'm going to start. And then you can try to get different some other way. Um, but like I said, I mean, let's just take a look and see how this plays. Or Rodon, if you really want to be safe, you could play Urias. I mean, if you can get this in with Dodgers, I mean, can you make that work? Probably not, actually. I mean, because you do want to play, let's say you play Turner, Trey, uh, ooh, you can't really play. All right, so it's not that easy to get, play these guys, actually. Let's just see, for example, if you wanted to play all of these, all of these guys, where's Chris Taylor? And then let's say, let's say you want to do a full stack and want to play Freeman. You know, you can really almost do it with playing Rodon and, 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 and Urias, but, but you could easily do it if you play Pineda, right? Well, I would say easy. I mean, you still got to find 3K guys, but 3K guys are usually pretty easy to find. Um, like, for example, I'll just, I'll just throw a couple of them out there. Um, I mean, you got Cooper Hummel from Arizona. We talked about him, 2,700. I mean, you have Brian De La Cruz at Miami, he's flat 2K. Austin Slater, 2,900. You have Alec Thomas, whoever that is, for 2K, Arizona as well. Garrett Cooper, 2,800 from Miami. So, so you could use these Miami zones to kind of fill out your Dodger stacks like pretty easily. And that's probably going to be a, probably a pretty popular build. Maybe something like I'm throwing up here. Actually, probably would rather – people are going to try to use Woodruff. So if they did that, then maybe you could play four Dodgers, and then you could almost get – even get this in, almost, with those cheapos that I mentioned. You know, because you get De La Cruz in the outfield at 2K. You can do, um, well, you could play, well, then you need Hummels. He's in the outfield too. Dubon at shortstop at 2,300. Cooper you could play, as I mentioned before, at 2,800. I mean, you can almost make this work. So I think people are going to try to do that. Um. With respect to, to FanDuel, let me look at that for just for a second. Let's see if there's any real difference. Yeah, I got Rodon as an incredible standout over there. I don't know if I play anybody else. And with respect to stacks over there, um, let me look. There I actually, oh, are the Dodgers not, yeah, Dodgers not on that slate. Okay. So there it gets a little more interesting. There I actually like the White Sox the best and then Philly and then Miami. So on FanDuel, White Sox, um, Philly, Miami, those are my top ones with, uh, with Rodon pitching. Um, so that's enough to get you started for now. Hopefully I can make it live. If not, maybe Rody can come on or whatever. At the very least, I hope to at least give you some takes and update my projections. But I uh, hope you all had a good weekend and let's get off to a good start uh, this week.